Hello everyone, my name's Lizzie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am currently living on a narrowboat named Benjamin and I have an online vintage shop called Benjamin Vintage Finds where I sell a lot of 1950s pieces um, but I go up to the 60s and all the way back to the Victorian era. Even earlier if I can find pieces it all depends on what I come across. Um, I thought it was about time I had a little sit down with you and had a chat because I know my last few videos have been quite um, just, you know, pretty videos where I show Benjamin moving or uh, showing off some of my vintage fashion and, and styling it and stuff. So I thought I would sit down, have a chat with you and share with you some of my new vintage pieces because I always find it exciting to see what other people have found and where they find them and stuff like that. So yes, if you're interested in vintage and boats and me, carry on watching. So yes, I, as you saw from my last video, um, I didn't explain anything in the video because I kind of forget that random people watch my videos and it's not people that have been following me since the beginning so they know why I've moved to the boat. Um, so I didn't explain anything. Well, I always explain things in the description. So when people comment things like, I don't understand why you're doing this, you just need to read the description. I always say what I'm doing. Um, but yes, so I, I moved Benjamin about 500 meters, if that, uh, just to, instead of being at the end of the port where there are basically loads of boats that aren't lived on and I was all by myself and I thought, oh, it'd be more safe to be there by myself with no lights and be all like as if I wasn't there. But I think that's what enticed someone to come onto the boat. So then I've moved, um, right across from the port building which is where my uncle works and my mum comes sometimes so but obviously they're not there during the night which is when people come but still it makes me feel a bit safer to know that I could go there and I'm also surrounded by um, other boaters who have been very very kind and have been taking care of me <laughs> and I've got loads of business cards of other people's boats saying oh if anything happens just give us a call and they've all been really lovely and I've been getting lots of um, big, big chunks of wood stuck between my boat and Juliana, which just bangs all night long. So I was trying to get rid of that um, and someone from another boat came along and helped me and then another person came along and was helpful. So we were three people trying to get this wood from out from between the boats. But it was just, it was, it's very nice to know that, you know, I'm all by myself, but people are aware that I'm here and, you know, I think will look out for me if, if ever something happens or if ever I need any help or anything like that. So I thought that was very lovely and I think it's very much like that in the boat community anyway. I've always felt, you know, people are very lovely. People that live on boats, not boat renters. I won't say anything about them. Um, no, joking. But, but you know, when you live on the boat, you're kind of like a little community and stuff. So it's been very lovely. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, I watched Bridgerton. If anyone here likes period dramas, I would tell you, watch Bridgerton, it's, I love it. It's very good, I love any kind of period drama, and this has got like a slight modern twist on it, so normally I'm a bit iffy with that, I'm like, if you want a period drama, do period drama, and if you want something modern, do something modern, but they've combined it very nicely, and it's a great series. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get in to the clothes. So. Yesterday I went up to Paris because I don't live that far away from Paris for the first time in a very long time um, because I've always wanted to look around their vintage shops and last time I went up which was ooh, almost a year ago now I went up to um, Saint-Ouen which is actually where a big big vintage market of not just clothing but furniture, paintings, knickknacks, anything you can think of in terms of vintage stuff and not just like 80s stuff I mean like proper antique pieces you can find over there so I went there with my mum and I met up with my cousin who lives over there I thought this time I would just have a look around the like thrift shops I suppose um, and see what they have uh, I guess maybe I should have planned a little bit better I kind of just thought I'll go to the Marie and I know all around there there's vintage shops um, but I think maybe I should have done a bit more research because obviously I'm looking for quite a specific era which isn't easiest to find um, so I have to say I didn't have the best of luck finding things I found three dresses 
which I'm quite pleased about, but all in one shop, I found nothing in all the other shops. But I didn't have the best experience going to some of the vintage shops. I didn't find the uh, people very nice. Found that actually a lot of stuff that was vintage was not vintage. You just need to look at the labels and you'll see that they're actually modern day brands. Maybe they're from the early 2000s, but I don't really consider that vintage. So yeah, it wasn't the best of times when it was pouring with rain, which seems to be a constant. Oh, hang on, someone on the road. What's Kevin doing? Not to worry, it was someone that works at the port and I don't know them so it's fine. Uh, but what was I saying? Basically it wasn't a very nice day in terms of weather, the shops weren't great, uh, but still it was nice to you know walk around by myself and explore Paris a little bit because I don't go to Paris very often even though I live quite close to it. Um, and I met up with my cousin which was really nice and we had lunch outside in the rain but we managed to find a, a covered market and it was very nice, nice chat with her and hopefully I'll go up and see her again soon. So to start with, I found, sorry, I did not steam them, I have not cleaned them, I am sorry. I came back yesterday, so, oh, but I found this beautiful blue wool dress from the 50s and it's got almost like an empire waistline, which is, I find always flattering. Um, and it's got lovely seams to make the waist look smaller and almost, I would say, bat winged, which is quite nice, lovely high collar. And it's got a zip on the back and a zip on the side, makes it easier for me to get in if I need to. And yeah, you know, hand sewn or machine sewn in certain places, but basically hand sewn everywhere. And it's branded, which I need to actually look it up, but it's. Jonathan Logan, Jonathan Logan, whoever that may be, I need to do a quick search, but I saw it straight away and I saw the label first actually, I was like, hmm, that's definitely old. And I took it out and I was like, yes, that's definitely 50s, if not maybe 40s, but I think 50s from um, the shape of it, a you know, bit more extra fabric on the waist, which then, oh, my goodness, it has a pocket. <gasps> It's got a big pocket. Sorry, I got excited. I didn't realise they were pockets. Is it only on one side? I think so, because that's where the zipper is. My goodness. That's amazing. It has a pocket. This one is, like many 50s dresses I have found, has been shortened probably to accommodate for the 60s. Um, but you can see that it's been hand stitched quite badly to shorten the skirt and they've used white thread which you can see through there but I think I could probably unpick that and let it out to its full length but um the sh it was the hang on let me do at least one button up it was the neckline shape that I thought was quite lovely and I liked the the colors so yeah and it comes with a matching belt it's in quite good condition um I thought it was cotton to start with but it's definitely not it's um not 100% sure what it is, but it's some kind of shiny fabric that... Oh, Lord! Anywho. Yes. So this is very cute. I don't think it has pockets, but it's got a nice pleated skirt and a matching little belt. But yeah, this one, and it's got a side zip. I just think it's quite nice. It'll be a good, like, summer day dress. And then this is the last one. I like this one a lot. It's got lovely pattern. Oh, definitely prepared for this. So it's got a zipper up the back and then it's got buttons and I think you could probably wear it either way. You could wear it this way around with the buttons showing and then obviously you'd have the zipper showing but it doesn't matter. Which I think looks very cute. But I think you could wear it the other way as well because obviously the zipper does show it's not like it's got a flap over it to hide it. So you would think that would be the back. But it doesn't really matter, you can wear it whichever way you want. Um, and it caught my eye because I have another dress that's very similar to this. Um, I know it's a little dirty, but I think I could probably clean that. That has the very, um, a very similar texture to it, to it, and the flowers are blue rather than pink. And I was like, hmm, that looks very similar. So I picked it up and thought it was lovely. And it comes with a matching belt too. They all fit, which is very dangerous. Normally I try and get things that potentially don't fit me, otherwise I'll keep everything. So that's those three. Then 
if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this one. But the next few items, um, I buy, or have been buying an awful lot of stuff online, mainly English websites, because the French websites don't, for some reason, don't have very much, even though when I go to French Vue Greniers, which are car boot sales, there are some very good pieces, but they just don't seem to sell them online for whatever reason. And then when they do sell them online, they sell them for quite expensive, whereas in the UK, you can find them at pretty good prices. So I had been buying a lot of pieces, sending them to my grandma who lives in the UK. And then when I accumulated quite a lot, I would put them all in a big box and get UPS to send them over. But now with uh, Brexit, um, I'm not 100% sure what the costs difference is going to be and what taxes I might have to pay. Um, so we'll see, I haven't bought anything. I've been trying to buy things in France, uh, but it's not as easy as it seems, especially since there are no vintage fairs, no car boot sales. And there aren't car boot sales during this time of year anyway. They, well, at least where I live, they start in May and go through all the summer. Um, and then vintage fairs around here. There's one potentially in February, but nice if it happened but I'm not convinced. I've tried to ask if I can participate but no one's answering me, typical French people. This is your job and yet you're not answering me but oh well. Anyway, I found this fantastic, the owner said 50s but I think 60s, aquascutum um, camel coloured wool coat. It's really lovely and it's got le dark brown leather trimming around the collar and the pockets. It does have one quite big um, mark where the, the wool or whatever you would call this has kind of gone. I don't know if that's a moth or if it got caught on something, you know, maybe from a bracelet when you put your hand in the pocket. But other than that, it's in brilliant condition. The lining's really good. Um, there's barely any staining around the armpits, which is a very common place to have staining. Um, the reason I say 60s is because it's saying what it's made of, just the lining, which they definitely didn't, or very rarely did in the 50s, um, and actually it wasn't popular until the 70s, but I think by the shape of it, which is very much A-line and quite short-sleeved, it makes me think of the 60s. And I did try and do a bit of research, and it says that this ticket was used, this ticket, this label, was used um, from the 50s till the 70s, so it could be any of that time period but I think 60s by the looks of it but yes it's in very good condition but like most vintage things it smells a little bit I did steam it which normally helps but I might have to take it to the dry cleaners because I hand wash normally everything but not coats or stuff like that there's just no way I would dare try and wash a lovely coat like that and next up oh we have something very beautiful. Um, funnily enough, I had seen this on eBay well, a while back and I was bidding on it and it's quite expensive but I was like oh this is just stunning and it's in perfect condition. I don't mind bidding a little bit more than I normally would uh, but I lost, someone outbid me and then a couple of weeks ago I was on eBay again and it was there again so whoever bought it because it was being sold by the same person again, obviously didn't pay, so they just put it back up for sale. Um, and I bid on it, no one else bid on it, and I got it for the cheapest price, so that's very good. I'm very pleased about that. It's this gorgeous 1930s silk, cream silk nightdress with, I'm not sure what the flowers are, I'm sorry, but all embroidered. I think Hackney are definitely all hand embroidered. Beautiful piece that has, again, an empire waistline and then some little ties that you tie at the back to bring in the waist and it's just absolutely stunning. It's floor length and it's quite a good size, fits me. And the best part is it comes with a little matching bed jacket, bolero, whatever you want to call it, with the same um, embroidery on it, which you can't see because the sleeves are covering. But as you can see, same beautiful floral embroidery with the lovely pale salmony coloured trim. It's just beautiful. And then we have very funky 1960s. When I say mini, I mean mini dress. It could basically be a shirt on me. It's so tiny. In lengthwise, I mean. 
um, it's a button-up from the waist shirt dress with like a skater skirt shaped skirt and it has slightly balloon sleeve because it um, does up here and the sleeves are a bit wider it has that typical almost mod um, quite big collar which you can see the only thing which I haven't noticed which is silly so whoever washed it didn't take very much care and some of the flowers have bled into the white so I'm not too sure I can do about that. Um, I was thinking maybe I could, because if I try and wash it again what if all the flowers bleed and then I end up with not a white background but a pink background. Um, I was thinking maybe I could try and spot and uh, clean it but I'm not very good with little parts, you know, what if I clean that and then I go and that. Uh, I don't know, if anyone has any recommendations, let me know on how to clean a dress that the colours have bled through a little bit. Because I'm not too sure what to do with that. Normally it's quite straightforward to clean dresses, but this is an incredible, incredible find. I've been wanting to find a 1940s suit for ages, and I've bid on so many and lost almost every time because people bid really quite, they go up to over £200 and I'm like, there's no point in me, unless I'm buying it for myself, that's an awful lot of money to then think I want to sell this as well, you would make basically zero profit. Uh, but I found this one and I was determined I was going to have it and it seemed like not many other people were that interested so I got it for a very good price, so it's just, it says a size 42, there's no way this is a size 42, um, plain black Hang on. The back. Plain black, uh, I would say almost gabardine thick cotton skirt. Um, unlike the 50s ones where pencil skirt would be much thinner, you can see this is a 40s one because it's almost just like like a A-line skirt, almost, I would say. But that's not the important part. The important part is this amazing jacket, which fits me perfectly, by the way. I might have to keep it for a little bit. Ugh, see, that's the problem. Finding things that fit you, then you're like, oh, well, maybe I can keep it, you know. But here's the jacket. I'm hoping you can see that. So it's got almost um, mother of pearl buttons. And then, I don't know if you can see, but it's got really nice um, pockets that have like flaps to go around. It's very simple detail, but it really makes a difference. And then it has a very um, pulled in waist. And obviously you put it over the jacket, the skirt. Oh, maybe you should have rolled it because it, the problem with some fabrics, they just catch on anything. Um, but yes, and it's branded from a Gerald Fisher model. Sorry, why is it an N? A Gerald and Fisher model? Maybe. But it's saying a size 42, I would say this is a 38 modern day size, which is more of a UK 10. Um, but it is beautiful in almost, oh, well, I can't see anything wrong with it. It's not faded, the armpits aren't stained, there are no holes that I can see. It's, it's just perfect, the seams aren't ripped, the seams aren't pulled. Um, it really almost like it was basically never worn. It's just gorgeous. So if I do get to go to a vintage fair at some point this year, I might have to wear that and then I'll sell it. And then we have a Peggy Lane 50s dress. Oh. Let's do that up. I bought it because I just loved the collar. It was quite cool the whole neckline um, I thought the pattern was nice but it's kind of got like um, a rose here I probably need to steam that uh, just got um, a belt that you can tie at the front or at the back normally at the back and it's quite an abstract pattern I'm not sure I could describe it as flowers but I thought the colors were lovely and it's a um, nice thick cotton and it's lined with linen so I always like when dresses are lined I find it a little extra but yes I, I like finding just quite simple cotton dresses that you can basically wear, wear? basically wear every day 
And then there's the last thing, yes. The last thing, but it's a little funky. Um, I hadn't realized quite how bright it was when I ordered it, but this is a large size, well, a larger size than you would normally find for vintage. And can you guess what era it is <laughs> from the colors? It's a 1960s bright green, um, no, I was going to say tweed, but it's not tweed, but wool skirt that is lined with a reversible matching jacket. But yes, here's the jacket. It like almost toggles. Is that the right word? Oh, I think it's something else. As buttons. Um, and yes, as I said, it is reversible. So you can have it the other way and have this as the pop of colour on the collar. Um, I think if you're going to go for it, you got to have it this way round. I don't know, I just saw it and kind of fell for it. I'm, sometimes some of the weirdest things I find are the things that sell the fastest. Like I had an amazing, bright, vivid green. I had the same words, bright and vivid, but the same concept. Um, wool dress from the 60s that was kind of disgusting but amazing at the same time and it sold like that i had three people asking for it and it just sold so quickly so you never know what people like um you think that some people might like the more chic simple stuff like this amazing black suit but actually this might sell before that one but yes here is my pile of new vintage things but it's not the easiest to find um places to buy vintage especially not where i live i've had a little bit of luck at some of the car boot sales but obviously there weren't many this year but the previous years i know there has been some vintage but it's it's, it's not the easiest to find surprisingly whereas i find the uk has a lot more to find i don't know i don't know why that would be why french vintage is more difficult to find because it's not like that's all been bought to put into vintage shops in paris because as i said I managed to find three dresses in there that were 50s but all the shops I'm pretty sure most of the dresses were 80s 90s maybe a bit of 70s here and there I don't know where it's all hiding is it all being bought for films or for costume departments I don't know um, so if you have any vintage and you live anywhere in France or even the UK and you don't know what to do with it I am always looking for vintage 40s and 50s especially, 60s I like, and anything older than 40s, perfect. So if you know of any good places around France um, that are good for vintage or antique stuff, um, or if you know anyone that sells vintage or anything to do with vintage, mainly clothes, mainly 40s and 50s, even though I'm pointing at a 60s item, um, please let me know, even if it's just for a chat, I just love everything and anything about that era anyway you will either see me afterwards because i will make the effort to try all these on or you won't and you'll just have to guess what they look like thank you so much for watching um i know it's just a sit down chatty video but i thought i hadn't done one of these for in a while and it's always nice to just you know put me on in the background and <laughs> listen to me blab away um and i will see you next week let me know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see about my vintage or about Benjamin. Um, you know, I'm always trying to think of new ideas on what I can show you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and leave a little comment down below maybe on which was your favourite outfit. And I will see you next week. Bye!